It's time for a new perspective with Mike Sherbineau and Julie Stoutland. Today, is God using the digital universe to further the kingdom? Of course, God can affect and change anything, anytime, anywhere. But when Matthew Potter started Pray.com, he knew the digital universe was virtually as infinite as the universe itself. And so he quit his job to start the company Pray.com with a group of people and a lot of funding from some keenly interested investors. Now millions of people join online prayer at Pray.com. As Mike says, prayer eats at the heart of a secular society. Today on The Perspective, prayer is good for the soul. We're excited you're with us today on the program. We're talking about a subject that I really love, and I don't claim to understand it all, but I know it's a major part of my life. And Julie, it's the subject of prayer. It is. Do you ever remember when you started to pray? Now I lay me down to sleep. That oh. one. Okay. All the years through my childhood. How you about you? As a childhood. Well, um, my parents didn't teach me those those kind of prayers. Okay. I probably had a different kind of home yeah. life, but they had already had a faith in God and. Uh, there was a, a, an ongoing dialogue, and so that was pretty neat. Yeah, it took me time to learn that I could just talk, and it didn't have to be absolutely and Many people something have questions down. about prayer, like, like, how do you do it? What's it like? Mm-hmm. And uh, just recently, I was uh, speaking to our church, and I was talking about the importance of prayer. Even to stop and say thanks for a meal. Yeah. To not say thanks, actually, is, uh, is basically saying, I, didn't, I did this all on my own. I don't need God. But it's a recognition of our our need of God. And we want to talk about prayer all sorts of ways today. We've got uh, Matthew Potter with us. And this is so exciting because he's with an organization called, of all things, (laughs) Pray.com. So if you've uh, ever needed help to pray or give some guidance, this is a great resource. And uh, Matthew, I just want to welcome you today to the program. Thanks for coming on from L.A. today. Hey, thank you so much for having me on. I'm honored and blessed to be here. Well, and you look good for so early in the morning, I got to admit. So, you know, I get up at 5 a.m. every day. So, absolutely love the early morning interviews Ooh. here. Hey, Matthew, <laughs> let's just take a moment and jump in. Maybe tell us a little about your own journey with prayer and tell us what is pray.com because there are millions of followers now. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. Yeah, pray.com is the number one app for daily prayer and faith based audio content. We actually just added video content uh, about a week ago. So, pretty excited about that. Um, My journey with pray.com starts actually with my co founder, Steve, and a tragedy that happened in his life. His business partner ended up passing away in a plane crash while they were filming a movie with Tom Cruise. Uh, called American Made. So they were stunt flying around the jungles of Columbia all day. And at the end of the day, Steve's business partner ended up dying in uh, the jungle. Wow. Wow. Of that movie. And so when that happened, Steve didn't really know what to do. And a friend of Steve's actually sent him a s- audio sermon from a pastor and it transformed his life. Huh. And Steve actually told me his story at a coffee shop. We were old time friends and played on rival high school football teams in our hometowns of Westlake Village here. And he was telling me his story at a coffee shop and how he wanted to build a app that was the digital destination for Christian content. And Steve didn't know, but I talked to my pastor's daughter the night before on how I could help and give back to my church. And so it was this providential moment at this coffee shop, and it was just incredible. So and when God gives you that opportunity to merge your passion with your Mm -hmm. skill, you just have to jump in with both feet. And so that's what I did. I stepped down as CEO of my company, joined up with Steve, Ryan Beck, and Mike Lynn, our incredible uh, founding team here at Pray.com. And Mm -hmm. It's just been amazing to see what God has done. So let's say, for example, I'm a new person and I'm like, okay, I don't know anything about pray.com. How does it work? What do I want? What do I need to do? Walk me through the steps. Yeah, super easy. You go to your app store, whether it's the Google Play Store, or Apple App Store. You can also go to the internet and just type in pray.com. But you can type mm-hmm. in pray.com in your app store, download the app. And immediately you'll be taken to our listen feed where you'll have incredible 
content from all of our pastor partners and media ministries that are providing content to the app, as well as over 5,000 pieces of content that we created at Pray.com. We created that with a 61-piece orchestra, sound designers. It's an incredible cinematic experience where you can hear your favorite Bible stories come to life in vivid audio. So it's been amazing. How many years have you been working on this? Like when did that conversation you had with your, the guy that turned out to be your business partner, how long ago was that? Yeah, that conversation, that coffee shop was October of 2016. We did about a year and a half of research. We went from churches to conferences and we interviewed and did a bunch of research. And then we started building our incredible team and we got some funding as well. And we started building the app. And so the app is about four years old, three years old right now. That is simply amazing. Um, you've grown exponentially uh, since you started the prayer app. Um, do you feel like God's propelling you? Uh, talk to us about your own spiritual uh, journey with developing the app and transformation and stories that you're hearing from people. Yeah, uh, so I've built over 6,000 apps in the App Store. I can't prove it, but I think we've built more apps than any other person in the world. But uh, it's just been an amazing journey for my life coming, uh, you know, from technology, from my previous company, the Pray.com. I, I mean, God is propelling this the entire way. I mean, we wouldn't be able to do the 100-hour weeks that we do to make sure that this company does incredibly well, and we actually do it for our members of Pray.com. People write in all the time uh, on the App Store in reviews to us personally with just some of the incredible experiences that they've had through the app, through the gospel being distributed through technology, right? There's more phones on planet Earth than toothbrushes now, so yeah. everyone... <laughs> Isn't that crazy? So let, let's flip the side. Like, does it ever not work? Does it backfire? What are the challenges? Yeah, yeah, challenges. I mean, there, there's always there's always challenges, but we have an incredible team at Pray.com. Uh, you know, we are we've got world class engineers. We've got world class uh, people working on our team that overcome any challenges that come our way. And you know, some of the things. With technology, you're always updating, right? right. Uh, you're, always, you're always making improvements. We always find, you know, little things where maybe members get stuck and they, they're they in a loop and we've got to adjust. And that's why we also brought in our amazing chief data officer who helps us with kind of all of those challenges and, uh, you know, going through all of the data to make sure that we're providing the best experience for people. And and when we do, when we provide that best experience and we meet people where they're at, they write us reviews like they're, you know, they were going to commit suicide. Wow. And they found, they found the app and they found a church in the app that helped them. Uh, cool. You know, we had a woman who called in who said she was going through her second bout of stage four cancer. Oh. And she, she had no family. And the app she found consolement in the app while she was in the chemo chair. And I didn't know what that was, but I guess she had to be in a chair getting chemo for four hours a day. That's right. She would listen to Bible stories in the app. And she called in and she was mad because she couldn't log into the app. So we failed. <laughs> and you know, that's a challenge, you know, yeah. making sure that anybody can log in. If they're in the chemo chair, they have bad internet, they're in the hospital, you know, but we're, you know, it's incredible just to see the that people like her write a review in the app store. You know, most reviews on apps, you see it's, oh, this doesn't work or I don't like this. The reviews we get is this app is transforming my life through the gospel. Or, and that, that's so cool because of the fact that, you know, it's, it's a new way to really spread <clears throat> things out. I mean, technology has been around for a while, but it's just it's always interesting in each generation how there's new ways of getting the message out to help people to reach people, even in a chemo chair. Yeah, that's a powerful story. Absolutely. We've gone from the spoken word to stone tablets, to parchment, to radio, TV, now apps. So it's, it's incredible to see. You know, Matthew, I got a ton of questions for you. We're going to be right back after a short break as we talk more about Pray.com.
And he told me that he felt called to build the digital destination for faith content because he was the media guy and he didn't know about Christian content online. <clears throat> and so I said, Steve, I talked to my pastor's daughter last night on how I could help and give back to the kingdom. And we providentially ran into each other today. And you don't know what providentially means yet, but I'll tell you <laughs> later. And <clears throat> he told me, bought the domain, pray.com. And I said, Steve, I'll help you. I'll even do it for free, whatever you need. I just want to give back. And he asked me to start the company with him and two other incredible people, my co-founders, Mike Lynn and Ryan Beck. And we started Pray.com. And I stepped down as CEO of my own company the next day and put my co-founder in as CEO of Homestack. Well, we're here with Matthew Potter with Pray.com and uh, just the developing story of it is uh, so encouraging. Matthew, uh, drop a couple names. I'm, I'm curious, what organizations have come alongside to endorse you? I, I'm hoping it's a variety of uh, denominational uh, organizations that are saying we're supportive of this, but tell us who's supporting you. Yeah, absolutely. We've got incredible pastors uh, on Pray.com like Ed Young, Dr. Ed Young, Jack Graham, Pastor A.R. Bernard, um, you know, just to name a few. We've been, we've seen uh, Pastor Beth Jones come on Pray.com. All of them are supplying incredible sermon content and incredible messages on life uh, through the Bible. And so it, it's it's just been amazing to see you know, the testimonials and reviews that people have written in about uh, some of this sermon content and how it's transformed their lives or transformed their relationship or transformed the way their relationship with money. You know, there's so many uh, incredible pastors that are providing content. I couldn't even name all of them, but we're just we're so excited that, you know, they're having such an amazing effect on Pray.com's members. And the members will will email in and they will write in reviews and they'll request, you know, different pastors or more content um, from the same pastor on a particular topic. So we've seen that and it's been amazing. Are you finding your reach is more North American or is it truly global right now? Yeah, we, we actually, we have an incredible global reach. You know, uh, we started in uh, North America, including, you know, including Canada, but we have been, we have, seen a real global uh, development uh, in the last year or so. The Pray.com app has had over 72 million shares of the mm. app outside wow. of the platform. So, you know, wow. recently we, we pulled some stats recently and we hit number one in the app stores in 125 countries around the world. Mm. Well, that's fantastic. Congratulations. Yeah. I mean, I think, we've, I think we've already touched on the fact about how how well it's been affecting change in the digital universe. It's just 72 yeah. million. That's incredible. But uh, how do you think God is uh, uh, the prayer that is we talk about it as being very sacred and ha that God has given it to us? And how is it that we relay that uh, in this digital format? Is it uh, is it humans or is it bots answering or how do you measure your outcome? Yeah, there's a, there's no bots. Uh, it's all humans on Pray.com. Uh, you know, I know there's a lot of things in the news with Elon and Twitter, but we only have humans at Pray.com and and content. So, uh, you know, there's there's billions of people on planet Earth that wake up every day and they pray, and there's billions of people on planet Earth that wake up every day and they check their phone. So why not why not go to where people are at and they wake up and they check their phone and they can listen to a daily devotional content that Pray.com's created, or they can listen to, uh, you know, a snippet of a sermon that helps them start their day in the morning and helps them put them in the right mindset to, to really take on the day and really connect with their creator, connect, connect with God, um, and then, you know, be able to uh, get into that mindset of prayer and be able to pray. So that's, that's really the way we think about it. We're not um, you know, we're not, we're not trying to utilize technology to, to infiltrate this moment. We wanted to supplement. 
from it. Which is a great way of looking at it. I think you're allowing it to be useful as a tool, but you're not allowing it to take over. So, and you <laughs> keep that human connection, which is I feel is so important for us to feel that we're connected to other people, mm -hmm. other believers around the world, and this is a fantastic tool for that. So, Absolutely. Matthew, my question is, so let me play the other side because prayer is free. I spent some time in prayer today and uh, heaven didn't send me a bill. <laughs> um, what do you say to the people who say, well, that's called grace. That's great. <laughs> oh, okay, thank you. Phew. All right. How do you fund it? How do you keep it going? Um, how do you answer people that want to throw a little bit of mud into your oh, fan? Of course. Of course, that's that's a great question. So we we have uh, over 50,000 pieces of content that are completely free in pray.com. When you go on the app, we actually have more free content than we have content that you would have to pay for. So if you go in, we've got 50,000 pieces of free content you can listen to anytime. Now, if you want to venture into pray.com's incredibly high quality, high produced cinematic audio content, that we spent a lot of time and a lot of money investing into a 61 piece orchestra, the sound effects. Mm -hmm. You can hear your favorite Bible stories come to life. You can check that out too. There's no requirement though. We also allow people to have a, a three day trial. So you can actually listen to it for three days completely free in the paid section of the app. And if you don't like it, you can cancel anytime. So, um, that's kind of that's what we tell people. We want everyone to come and use the app. We want everyone to pray. And you absolutely don't have to pay for content. It's all free in the app. And if you want to go check out the paid section, you can do that too. So. Yeah, because at the end of the day, somebody's got to uh, pay the bills, don't they? And that's uh, right. That's right. There is a cost to that. So ah, I'm so encouraged to hear that. Tell us what's next. Like, can anybody uh, predict the, uh, the the digital revolution? But what do you think is next for Pray.com? Yeah, so what's next for us is we are a global app, uh, but we're not providing the most incredible experience to every country in the world. And so we want to be able to translate the app into many different languages that people would, uh, you know, love to hear the Bible and their favorite stories come to life in their own language. And so that's kind of what's next. We have Spanish, but we want to expand into a lot of different languages that people would like to, you know, listen to their favorite Bible stories come to life in their own native language. So does that mean you're bringing in translators and you're doing editing and all of the stuff that's involved in, in compiling things into other languages? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we brought in an incredible person. Her name's Elsita Sanya. She's at... Uh, Eventbrite and Squarespace, and she is an expert at internationalization and localization of apps and technology. And then our VP of content, Max Bard, who's amazing, is working with all of our translators and uh, producers and editors to be able to change and edit the content into different languages without losing the substance of the content. And so uh, Max, Alcida are an incredible team together, and they're actually working on that right now. Well, it certainly sounds like you've got all the elements in place, yeah. and obviously with 72 million people responding worldwide, it's incredible to see how it's growing, and I, I really pray that it continues to, and what, a, what an amazing, wonderful, impacting app for so many people all around the world. So thank you so much for sharing with us today, and just really pray that... Uh, People who are looking, that they'll go to pray.com and, and look into your information and look into the devotionals and the sermons and that uh, are really blessed by it as well. Thanks yeah, for joining we, us. We just absolutely believe in partnerships. If there's something that we can do to partner with you, let us know. Uh, huh. Because our goals are the same, to uh, extend God's kingdom and bring his peace here on earth. So thank you. Enjoy the weather in Los Angeles today. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Uh, excited to be here. And it was an honor to... Uh, be on air with both of you. So thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks Matthew. Take care. All right. Bye. All right, stay with us. We'll be right back. You know, sometimes just to unwind and keep it all together, I get in my truck and go for a drive. Sometimes I get on my motorcycle. We do all sorts of different things to try to keep ourselves together. We want to help you in your journey of life to keep it together, to discover God's principles for living. 
all this month, I want to make available to you free of charge Dr. Grant Mullen's amazing book, Emotionally Free. It's a prescription for healing, body, soul, and spirit. I love this book. I recommend it to people. I want to give it to you. Write to us at theperspective.tv. You know, the, the idea of prayer is so daunting for so many people, and they're like, what do, what do I do? And I think we just really need to, you know, peel off the, 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 the wrapper and go, it's just the same way I'm talking to you. It's allowing ourselves to be vulnerable, allowing ourselves to share our thoughts and feelings, because guess what? He already knows it. And I think it's wonderful to have apps like this that we can go to, and there's so many teachings and, and, and people praying and talking about issues that can help new believers, as well as those who have been following for a long time that are still feeling like they're stumbling. They, they still feel like, I have to be a certain way if I'm going to talk to God. I just want to say, you don't have to be. Just be yourself, because he already knows what you're like, and just pour it out to him and have a conversation, and then wait and see if he places something on your heart or gives you a scripture, and guess what? That's prayer. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay, you preach it. Uh, but I was thinking something else. You know, sometimes people are saying it, and it, during my teaching today, I want to talk about actually how to pray. Mm. Because people, you know, one day, one of the disciples said to Jesus, he asked him a question, which was really kind of bizarre. Uh, as a man, he said, Jesus, can you teach me how to pray? Like, I don't know if I've ever gone to other guys and said, hey, bud, can you teach me how to pray? Uh, <laughs> But there's part of me that desperately wants to know, how do I connect with the divine? And as you talk about that, uh, I remember a well-known preacher once saying this simple advice. He said, first thing I do in the morning is I roll out of bed and I drop to my knees mm. for five minutes. And I just take time to be quiet, to pray. And uh, even before you have the coffee, that doesn't mean your brain's always no, working, but just to pause and to say, Lord, I want to invite you into the presence of today. Because otherwise, life always seems to be a mess. Yes. There's always so many things happening. Always. And uh, Jesus gives an example. He got away to pray. Over and over again, Jesus was slipping away to pray to his heavenly father into dialogue. And what did he pray about? Just what you talked about. The stuff of the day and to say, you know, give me wisdom on yes. how to make decisions. Wisdom, yes. You know, yeah. and not to be reactionary. I think, you know, we see, keep repeating things over and over again and say, why do I make those mistakes? I think if we would stop and listen and pray, we would start to see a huge difference. And pray.com is a great tool to help. It definitely is. Yeah. I'm going to talk more about it right now. So let's just jump right into the heart of the matter today. Let's talk about prayer. As I mentioned to Julie, in a passage in Luke chapter 11, one of the disciples asked a question of Jesus. He said, teach us how to pray. Uh, it's not the typical conversation you'd find between two guys at the local bar, two guys out fishing. Uh, but here was a man, one of these gnarly fishermen, and he's saying, Jesus, can you teach me how to pray? I want to tell you a very interesting side story. A group of physicians used what was called a double-blind drug study on the efficacy of Christian prayer on healing. And patients from San Francisco General Medical Center were randomly divided into the placebo and the test groups. Patients in the test groups were prayed for by Christians, and the placebo group received no prayer. There was no statistical difference between the placebo and the prayer groups before the prayer was initiated. But the results demonstrated that patients who were prayed for, get this, suffered less congestive heart failure, required less diuretic and antibiotic therapy, had fewer episodes of pneumonia and fewer cardiac arrests, and were less frequently intubated and ventilated. Somehow, prayer makes a difference. And how much more of a difference does it make if you are a willing participant? If you're crying out to God and saying, Lord, I want to come to you with the stuff of the day. So how do we pray? Well, Jesus gave us an example that when we pray, we should say these words. And it's not some kind of a repetition. It gives us an insight into who we're praying and what we're to ask for. And he begins by saying, here's how we approach God. 
our Father who art in heaven. You've heard those words. There's something about the Father. It's a picture of, of a dad, someone who is nurturing and caring and warm. Maybe you haven't experienced that in a father figure in your own life. But God says, you can come to me, all you that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I think also as we think of God the Father, he's described as a mighty rock, a hiding place in trouble. The Bible says he's able to do exceedingly above and beyond all that we could ever ask or think. And Jesus said to his disciples, he said, when you pray, say, Father. And then he said, hallowed be your name. There's an element of God's holiness that we're quickly uh, tempted to avoid. Because suddenly it causes me to say, hey, is my life in alignment with his? Um, Is there things in my life that are displeasing to God? And suddenly like his light shines into the dark crevices of my own soul and exposes things that when brought to the light, give me freedom. Bible says it's our Father in heaven. And heaven, more than a location, speaks of the very presence of God. I want you to know this, that when we pray to God, who is in heaven, it's where his very presence is. Do you remember Jesus? He said to his disciples, in my Father's house are many rooms. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to be with me so that where I am, you may be also. So we look forward in anticipation to being in heaven. And then we're to ask for certain things. He said, we're to ask for God's purpose. He says, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not God, let my kingdom reign, but God, let your will be done in and through my life. And that's why at times when things don't go the way that I expect, I can still trust God even if it's difficult. Think of Jesus when he went to the cross. That was not some fun escapade, folks, but he was right in the middle of what God wanted to do. And you might be in the middle of pain today in a difficult situation, but you're saying, Lord, let your kingdom come, your will be done. And then he said, give us this day our daily bread. I don't think we prayed this as seriously in Canada and the States in the last 30 or 40 years as we are now. With COVID and all the cutbacks that people are facing, suddenly we realize that we are dependent upon God. And God says we can ask him for our daily needs. I've discovered that he's met all my needs and some of my greeds as well because he is a loving God. But then he says, forgive us this day. He says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. The key to relationship is realizing that as we've experienced God's forgiveness, I need to forgive other people. I not need to carry along a bag of things that people have done wrong. And when I walk that way and choose to walk that way, there is, there is a lightness. Because then I can say, lead me not into temptation. I want to walk with you, God, which is the whole journey of prayer. Start the journey. Start the journey.